We all know from our geometry class long, long time ago that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, where r is the radius of the sphere. So if that's r, you know you can find volume by multiplying the cube of r by 4 thirds pi. But how can you prove this? And that's going to be the focus of this video. And we are going to prove it using calculus and particular method we're going to use is the disk method. And I'm going to show you how we're going to set this up. To begin with, we are going to start by realizing that you can get a sphere by rotating a semicircle. Let's, let me try to draw a semicircle. So that's a semicircle. And when you rotate the semicircle around the x axis, you're going to get a sphere. Because when you rotate this around, think of the semicircle to be popping out of the screen, going back into the screen, rotating around, around this x axis, and you're going to you're going to form a sphere as this thing rotates around. Every single one of these are going to rotate around, and you're going to get something that looks like this. You're going to get a sphere because all of these are rotating going back and you are getting a sphere out of this so that's the first realization we can rotate a semicircle about the x-axis about the x-axis my handwriting isn't the best today and you're going to obtain a sphere so let's go by that so how can we use mathematics to you and you end this fact the fact that you can get a sphere by rotation to find the volume well let's start by finding equation of the semicircle and let's say this is negative r and this is r because you, this is going to be the radius this part is going to be the radius of our sphere so i'm going to label this r and this thing is going to be negative r Okay, and the equation of a circle centered at the origin is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And rearranging this gets us y squared is r squared minus x squared, or y is equal to plus or minus square root of r squared minus x squared. And the thing is, in, in this case, we are looking at positive square root of r squared minus x squared as our y. The negative part, the negative square root of r squared minus x squared describes the semicircle down below but we are focusing on the semicircle up top so we're going to focus on positive square root of r squared minus x squared and what is happening well the thing is you're rotating a bunch of these rectangles think about this circle as being composed of many many rectangles infinitely many rectangles in fact so you have a bunch of these rectangles and you're rotating these rectangles around the x-axis and when you rotate it you're going to get a disk you're going to get a disk for this one you're going to when you rotate this you're going to get another disk and when you combine all of these disks you add another disk another disk another disk smaller disk and this disk is large smaller 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 and when you combine all of these disks you're getting a sphere so if we can find volume of one of the disks so you, if we can find the volume of one of the disks and i'm going to denote volume of one disk by dv because it's a small part of the volume of the entire thing so if we can find dv and dv is volume volume of one disk and you are adding up you're adding up the, the dvs you're adding up the volumes of disks from negative r to r or you're integrating from negative r to r and that should get you the volume of the entire sphere so i'm going to start by finding volume of one disk and i'm going to add them up from negative r to r to get the volume of the entire thing and how can we find volume of one one disk well let's focus on let's focus on this disk so you have this disk and what the height of the disk is going to be let's label it dx some small change in x is dx so that's that's right in our case so we have small change in x and we want to find the radius of this disk and i'm going to use r to represent the radius of the disk remember the lowercase r lowercase r is the radius of a sphere our capital r i'm using to denote the radius of the disk and what is our r? Well, our r is 
our y, that's our y value. That's how far up with the this this rectangle is going up from the x-axis, and that's precisely as we figured out. Plus square root of r squared minus x squared. So the value of our r is r squared minus x squared, and you have dx. And how do you find the volume of a disk? Well, you find area of this part, which is pi r squared, and you're going to multiply by the height because you're adding up this area from this zero part all the way to dx part, you're adding it up over the distance of dx. So that's the dv, the volume of one disk is pi r squared times dx. And we can simplify this. We can substitute the value for r into this. And we know r is equal to square root of r squared minus x squared. So r squared is going to be r squared minus x squared. And we have dx. And the thing is, you're adding up dv. We're adding up, adding up dv is a bunch of the volumes of the disk with infinitely many disks. We have infinitely many disks, many disks. And you're adding it up and that's going to get us the volume of the sphere volume of sphere because when you add up volume of all of these tiny disks infinitely many disks from negative r to r you're going to get volume of a sphere and when you're adding things up and you're adding infinitely many of them this is definite integral this is definite integral by definition because definite integral, you're just adding up, it's a special type of summation. You're just adding up infinitely many things with very, very tiny width. So in our case, we're going to integrate dv. We're to find volume of the sphere. You're going to integrate this pi times r squared minus x squared dx. We're integrating it from negative r to r. So let me put that. Okay, so now we have to figure this out. So how can we? Well, to start with, we can get this pi outside. So I'm going to do that. So that's pi times integral from negative r to r of r squared minus x squared dx. Now we can proceed, but there's a slightly quicker way if you notice something. The thing is, the rotation we're doing is symmetrical. And symmetry is always, always something to focus on when you're solving mathematics question. Because by using symmetry and utilizing it, it's usually helps you simplify the way toward the solution. And this, in this case, the simplification isn't too much. But in some other cases, focusing on symmetry can help you reduce the amount of work by a lot. And in this case, instead of going from negative r to r, we can just go from zero, from zero to r because, because you're just doubling it up. From negative r to zero, you're getting you're getting the semicircle right here. You're getting this, this red semicircle. And from 0 to r, using the rotation, you're getting this semicircle, this semisphere, I should say, hemisphere. So instead of rotating from negative r to r, we can just rotate from 0 to r and multiply the entire thing by 2. Let me reiterate. Instead of going from negative r to r, I'm just going from 0 to r, just making the rotation from 0 to r. And instead of doing, and I'm just doubling it to account for what's happening on the left side. Because the rotation in the left side and the right side are basically the same, instead of going from negative r to r, we can just go from 0 to r and multiply the result by 2. Okay, so let's simplify this. You have 2 pi integrating r squared minus x squared get you r squared x minus x cubed over 3, and you're going from 0 to r. And the reason I'm getting r squared times x, if you're confused, is because r squared is constant. When you are integrating 7 dx, you simply get 7 times x, because 7 is a constant. And in this case, our r squared is constant. So if you integrate r squared, you're simply going to get, as you're getting 7x, you're going to get r squared times x. And integrating negative x squared gets you negative x cubed over 3. And now we just plug in the values. Plugging r into this gets you r cubed minus r cubed over 3. Plugging 0 into x gets you simply 0. So you, you don't have to worry about that. And you have 2 pi times, this is the same thing as 2 r cubed over 3, because that's 3 r cubed over 3. And our final answer is 4 thirds, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 thirds pi r cubed. That's the reason why this method is called the disk method, because you're adding up the volumes of a bunch of disks to find the volume of the entire thing. 
And we have our answer, volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed.